So I bet you're here because you are interested in potentially buying a camcorder just like this one. This one in particular is the Panasonic WXF991. That is a mouthful and that's not even the whole thing. It starts with HC, blah, 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 blah. Who cares what the numbers are? This is considered the best 4K camcorder that you can buy today on par with Sony's AX551 or something like that, which is the only competitor this really has in the prosumer camcorder market. There's literally one camcorder that's in its rough price range that even competes with this. So assuming that we're gonna not talk about the Sony, but rather the Panasonic, this is basically the best camcorder you can buy in 4K. What's significant about this tiny little mirrorless camera that happens to also be from Panasonic. They both shoot 4K video. They both are really good at what they're supposed to do. But this one is $900 and I bought it used for $700 along with two big extra batteries. This one I bought brand new on a sale, it's not the normal price, but I caught a sale for $450. And I bought this, I can barely reach it, clumsy doohickey here that replaces the battery with a USB power pack and I can get roughly the same uh, battery life in this little camera as I do in this big one with the two batteries. Now, mind you, this is much more practical to switch a little battery that's designed for it than to have this cable hanging out the back of the thing and then plug it into a USB connector, blah, 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 blah. But the USB connector, well, these are really cheap and you can buy these everywhere and replace them with a fresh one as you use them up. But the approximate battery life of this is the equivalent to this. Now, what's significant about this is I paid for a new camera way less than I did for a used one. And they both shoot 4K video. Now, this is the GX85, which is significant because it's one of the very few mirrorless cameras that have absolutely no limitation or restriction on your 4K video length. It will record until it runs out of battery or memory card. Um, many of the other mirrorless cameras do limit you to either 29 and a half minutes or some of them four gigabytes, which is really short in 4K, that's like eight minutes. Now, the, this particular camera doesn't do it. Some of the other Lumix, Panasonic Lumix cameras don't do it either. Sony cameras don't do it either. In fact, that's what I'm shooting on right over there. Uh, but they cost a heck of a lot more. So let's talk Panasonic to Panasonic. Why would, in the world would you buy this camcorder over this much smaller GX85 that costs approximately half as much new? Um, honestly, it's a hard sell. Now, the, the one advantage is this is quite durable. Um, this has actually been my production camera uh, for work-related reasons for about three years. And it's been handed to at least a dozen different professional camera people who have used it. And it looks brand new. There's just zero signs of use on this thing. This camera, on the other hand, is relatively new. It's about one year old. And... The inside of it has a stabilizer on the lens, which you can tell when you shake it gently. You can feel there's something moving in there, and that's absolutely normal, according to Panasonic's websites. And if you Google it, um, if you drop it once, it's probably not going to survive because of the stabilizer. Well, apparently, the uh, sensor is on a, some kind of stabilization system that can't, take, can't absorb an impact. So this is not something I would feel comfortable handing around to a dozen different camera people, and it probably wouldn't look that good a year later. Now, in terms of the actual um, quality of the video coming out, this one has a tiny sensor, absolutely like microscopic size sensor. This one has a, uh, a, three, three, a four third inch sensor. So the sensor on this is much bigger. What does that mean in real world? It means this in low light is gonna knock this thing out of the water. Video taken in, in low light, there is not going to be any competition. This one pro has some kind of lux setting. I don't know what it was, zero lux, two lux, whatever it is, the light setting. But that is accounting for the backlighting, and it doesn't account for graininess. But real world, when you, want not, you don't want grainy pictures, this is going to kill it for half the price. 
So right now we're talking shooting 4K, better in low light, half the price, physically much smaller. I mean, th there's no comparison. This can go into a pocket of a jacket. This you can't. I mean, you just can't. Now, when you're shooting for hours and hours on end, which I have done on occasion, um, having just these little battery packs is definitely easier than this clumsy thing. So there is that aspect, but it's pretty hard to sell, honestly. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out why anyone would buy this. See, I bought it because I didn't know better. I didn't know you had mirrorless cameras that shot without the time limit because most of them have a time limit. I needed to shoot for more than half an hour continuously without breaking the video up. And as soon as I found this, I bought it and I didn't actually want to hand it out to camera people because it feels delicate and it weighs easily double as much as, hmm, not about double, it weighs at least 50% uh, more than the camcorder even though it's so much smaller. However, it feels delicate. Now mind you, this is perception and it's also based on reading reviews that I see online. So it isn't necessarily reality. Reality might say I could drop both cameras and they'll both break. I don't know. But meantime, three years of use, this is immaculate. I mean, it literally looks like a brand new perfect camera. It works 100% of the time. All right, now let's talk about some of the things that both of the cameras have that it's basically equal, okay? Both of them have in-camera charging, means you don't have to remove the batteries in order to put them on the charger. You simply plug the charger into the camera and the charger's built in. However, on the GX85, it's a USB charger, and on the Panasonic camcorder, it's some kind of proprietary charger with a plug that goes into this port right over here that's nicely hidden away. However, it's not a standard plug, and if you lose it, you gotta buy another one from Panasonic or something compatible. This is a standard USB plug that everybody has. It's a USB, it's a micro USB plug that everybody has on from their phones. If you have an older phone, the newer ones use USB-C, but everybody has micro USB. You can always recharge this camera. In terms of recharging time, they both take an incredibly long time to recharge, probably about two to three hours minimum, if not longer. However, they will both shoot on a full battery about, well, this one, let me backtrack. The Lumix will shoot on a full battery easily 90 minutes of 4K video, 60 to 90 minutes at minimum, but it's probably closer to 90. And this camcorder using the small battery is about the same. And these big batteries are way longer. It's more than two hours on a battery. So, and it came with two of them. So I can actually shoot about five to six hours on this camera with what it came with. And I could probably do the same with this one um, if I use the external USB battery pack and the clumsy wire that it comes with. Um, and I did have to pay for that separately, but it was dirt cheap. It was something like 15 or $20. Um, so battery life, they're fairly similar. Recharge times, fairly similar. They both charge in the camera. You don't have to pop batteries out, which I find to be annoying. Some people just don't care. Um, in terms of touch screens, they both have a touch screen display and they are both fairly annoying to use the touch screen because you need microscopic fingers. However, the touch screen on this one is a full swivel that goes around the other way and that is a huge advantage. Plus, because it pops out, you don't press it ever by accident. Never, ever, ever by accident. This one's on the back of the camera and it does hinge forward, it's extremely challenging to do that because you have to have very thin fingers to catch the grip to hinge it out. And it only goes up and down. It doesn't really fully hinge. It'll, it'll kind of pan up and that's about it. Um, so that's the limitation on the GX85. Plus being that the, the position of where this touch screen is, you hit it all the time by accident, always. Because it's a fairly small camera, which is great for portability, but it's really easy to wrap your fingers around it and push the screen by accident. It happens a lot on this camera. Ah, one more reason to buy the camcorder. This one is dummy proof. Nothing you're gonna do when you're in full auto automatic setting is gonna make this one ruin your video. This one, you need half of an engineering degree to figure out how to use it correctly. Now, you can switch the setting on the top here uh, to the A setting, which is full auto, excuse me, the P setting, which is full auto, and you can shoot in automatic, and you can still have things go out of focus, things go out of white balance. It can do all sorts of stuff. It's got a touch screen on the back that if you touch it while the camera is on, you can do all sorts of things inadvertently. There's some issues there. You have to know what you're doing with this. 
anybody can shoot with this. You literally flip the screen on, okay? It's nothing more than flip the screen out. There's not, you don't even have to push the power button, okay? It goes on and off when you flip the screen. It's just as simple as that. You, you flip the screen open, it powers on, the lens cap is even automatic on the front. Check that out. When you flip this thing, shut, oh, come on camera, focus. I got, that's a Lumix right there. <laughs> I don't want to focus on the right thing. Hold on. Come on, focus, you. Okay. I can't believe I have to cut the video to, to this thing focus, goods in focus. There we go. Okay. Take two. So this camera here, it even has an automatic lens cap. You shut it, the camera off, the lens cap closes, you flip the camera on, the lens cap opens up. It's just as simple as that. You cannot mess this camera up. There's one button operation. Here's the record button here. You push it once, the camera starts recording. You push it again, the camera stops. If you start recording and you simply flip the screen shut mid-recording, it will save your recording. You cannot lose your important videos using this. With this camera, on the other hand, I can think of about half a dozen ways you can end up losing your footage. Now, you have a manual um, lens cap that requires tiny little fingers in order to actually operate that. Let's move this over. Le tiny little fingers in order to operate this lens cap. Um, then once it's on, the lens retracts manually, so you have to physically open the lens up like that in order for the camera to work. However, once that's on, you do have a record button up here that you can press and it will start recording video. If you push the other button that looks like uh, a photo button, you'll take a photo and your whole video would never have been started. There's uh, in fact a whole bunch of buttons on here and you can push things by accident on the screen and do all sorts of stuff and it will not record your video. With the GX85, you can push the record button up here and do all sorts of things inadvertently with your finger pressing on the screen here and mess up your video. You can also, instead of pushing this button up here, accidentally push the photo button and you'll take a picture, a still photo, and it'll never actually record video. And it feels to your thumb pretty much the same. Uh, it's a little different, but it's not significant. The fact that you shut the camera off and the lens does not retract and it doesn't have a lens cap is just one more thing to do, which is not bad. In fact, the fact that the, le the lens retracts at all is pretty neat but then you gotta put the lens cap on. And, it, and there, it's really, really simple, but it isn't dummy proof. This one, you can give to anybody, the most technology clueless person, and they will shoot a perfect video with it every time. All right, now let's talk about some of the things that both of the cameras have that it's basically equal, okay? Both of them have in-camera charging, means you don't have to remove the batteries in order to put them on the charger. You simply plug the charger into the camera, and the charger's built in. However, on the GX85, it's a USB charger, and on the Panasonic camcorder, it's some kind of proprietary charger with a plug that goes into this port right over here that's nicely hidden away. However, it's not a standard plug, and if you lose it, you gotta buy another one from Panasonic or something compatible. This is a standard USB plug that everybody has. It's a USB, it's a micro USB plug that everybody has on from their phones. If you have an older phone, the newer ones use USB-C, but everybody has micro USB. You can always recharge this camera. In terms of recharging time, they both take an incredibly long time to recharge, probably about two to three hours minimum, if not longer. However, they will both shoot on a full battery about, well, this one, let me backtrack. The Lumix will shoot on a full battery easily 90 minutes of 4K video, 60 to 90 minutes at minimum, but it's probably closer to 90. And this camcorder using the small battery is about the same. And these big batteries are way longer. It's more than two hours on a battery. So, and it came with two of them. So I can actually shoot about five to six hours on this camera with what it came with. And I could probably do the same with this one um, if I use the external USB battery pack and the clumsy wire that it comes with. Um, and I did have to pay for that separately, but it was dirt cheap. It was something like 15 or $20. Um, so battery life, they're fairly similar. Recharge times, fairly similar. They both charge in the camera. You don't have to pop batteries out, which I find to be annoying. Some people just don't care. 
Um, in terms of touch screens, they both have a touch screen display and they are both fairly annoying to use the touch screen because you need microscopic fingers. However, the touch screen on this one is a full swivel that goes around the other way. And that is a huge advantage. Plus, because it pops out, you don't press it ever by accident. Never, ever, ever by accident. This one's on the back of the camera, and it does hinge forward. It's extremely challenging to do that because you have to have very thin fingers to catch the grip to hinge it out. And it only goes up and down. It doesn't really fully hinge. It'll, it'll kind of pan up, and that's about it. Um, so that's the limitation on the GX85, plus being that the, the position of where this touch screen is, you hit it all the time by accident, always. Because it's a fairly small camera, which is great for portability, but it's really easy to wrap your fingers around it and push the screen by accident. It happens a lot on this camera. Well, out of utmost hilarity, um, the unexpected did happen, and the, this camcorder, while I'm filming this video, actually crashed. In all three years of owning it, it never happened, but it locked up with an error message on the screen and nothing would bring it back to life except removing the battery. And it did say to you have to power cycle it and it lost my footage. That is incredible irony because in three years of shooting hundreds of hours of video footage, it is the very first problem I had and it's literally minutes after saying it's a dummy proof camera. I'd like to do one other test of how dummy proof these cameras can really be. First thing I'm gonna do is show you the autofocusing. Now this particular camera, okay, make sure it's recording. Now this camera, the camcorder, I can focus it away from me, back to me, away from me, back to me, back to me, away from me. Well, that's reversed. And it's always going to be in focus. You can't mess this up. See, back, back. It's always gonna be in focus. Now, unfortunately, this GX85 is notoriously bad at focusing. And if I simply put it away like this and put it back to me, I'm gonna be out of focus. And I can't see the screen. I'm just doing this out of experience using this camera. It's never gonna have me in focus, ever. It takes like three to four seconds, sometimes longer, to put me in focus. Therefore, this test right here is gonna show you I'm gonna be consistently out of focus always. That is why you need the camcorder simply for ease of use, because normally this uh, GX85 really doesn't focus well. There is a learning curve in using it. You know that once you know how to, that it does that, you have to keep yourself in view for at least four or five seconds if you want the autofocus to put you in focus. Everything's a learning curve on this camera. On the camcorder, on the other hand, you can literally pick it up, aim it at yourself, aim it away, aim it at yourself, and the thing just works. Now, in terms of advanced features, this thing does have a configurable white balance and a few other aspects to it. Honestly, I wouldn't think you'd, anyone's going to really use that too much because if you are going to use that, you're going to realize this takes a much better video because it's four-thirds sensor and this is a microscopic sensor. We're not, this is a micro four-thirds. This is a microscopic sensor. It is simply not comparable in terms of the quality of the footage. Now, in terms of just dots of pixels and all that stuff, honestly, it doesn't matter. This one is going to anyway be a lot more, but it really comes down to how much light is entering the lens because this is a much bigger sensor. It gets more light. Everything is going to come out better always. Now, one other aspect is this has got a zoom of 12 to 32 millimeters. This is the kit lens that came with it. I have a bunch of other lenses, but I paid more for those, so we're not going to include that in the apples to apples compar comparison. But 12 to 32 is approximately 3x zoom. This camera has a 20x optical zoom and then a 5x what they call intelligent zoom, which is, means a digital zoom that doesn't distort. Um, ignore the digital zoom because you can do that pretty much with any camera. But 20x optical zoom, okay? And I know it says 25x here. That's the intelligent zoom. It's 20x optical zoom this camera has. This camera has 3x. Now, you can buy a 20x lens for it, but that's a ton more money. However, even with that lens, you're still paying less for this camera new than you are for this camera used. And right then and there is the question, why would you buy this camcorder? Now, this camcorder particularly has one extra feature, and that is it has what they call twin lens. A second camera that's right here, which you rotate, and after you rotate it out, you have a second camera with picture-in-picture picture on the screen. 
In all the three years I've had this camera, I have never once used it, except to check that it works the day I bought it from the guy who sold it to me. Uh, honestly, I can't figure out how you're supposed to ma manage shooting two videos at once from the same device, because when you want to move this one, this one's going to move with it. You can rotate it independently, but it's only in one plane. And the other direction, both cameras are moving. Unless you're going to move, I guess, the screen with it. I, I don't know. I don't think anyone really uses this, the uh, picture the picture in picture effect thing in this. I, I struggle to, to buy that. But in any case, it has two cameras. Uh, it's called Twin Cam. The Panasonic was actually the very first camcorder ever in history to create a Twin Cam camera. This was approximately in the 19, late 1980s. So this is not a new feature. Their very first one had it mounted on top. It was a VHS camcorder, had a little second camera mounted on top that a person could move with their hand. I've only seen pictures. I've never seen this thing in person. It looked more clumsy than this one in terms of the second camera. Now VHS, by the way, is 640 by 480 pixels. We're talking 4K, okay? That's uh, 4,000 by 2,000 pixels or the other way around, but either way. Uh, we've come a long way and yet Panasonic is still the only camcorder manufacturer who believes people are humanly capable of shooting two videos on one camera. Except cell phone manufacturers who commonly have a front and back camera, but that's a little different because that's typically used for a, some kind of uh, video communication where you want to see the person in front and the people in back. For camcorders, I have never found a use for it. I don't know who's going to use it. Uh, yes, you could shoot selfie, while, selfie style, the little camera on you while you film out. That's possible. Maybe it's a fun toy, but, you know, $900 is an expensive toy. So I don't know how many people are really going to use it for that purpose. Meantime, $450 new, brand new. Normal price is like $600, but they do go on sale for $450. That's how much I paid for it. Brand new. Um... I don't honestly have any conclusion of any rational reason to buy this except if you are going to give it to someone who is going to mess up videos using this and they need the simplicity. Other than simplicity, there is absolutely no reason to buy a camcorder in this day and age over any mirrorless camera that can shoot continuous 4K video. Now if we're talking stills. There's not even a competition. The stills is, can take. There is even a dedicated photo button on the top. It's a joke. Don't even bother. We're not even talking about it. This thing can be, you, you could put printable, beautiful photos. This is out of a camcorder. There's not even a competition. Um, other than that, the lens on this is superb for a camcorder. It's a Leica brand lens, and it really has beautiful picture to it. The problem is, this one set is a lot better. And if you don't like it, you can buy other lenses, um, in particularly the, uh, th that open up much wider, faster lenses, meaning that the sh the, it lets m even more light in than the standard one. One more reason to choose the camcorder over the mirrorless camera is the audio pickup. It's got a 5.1 channel audio recording. It seriously will record in surround sound off of these five microphones on top. And that is absolutely brilliant. This camera records in stereo. You can't see it because I put a dust cover over it. Um, and this doesn't come off. It's a stick on, but I'm not peeling this off. This dust, excuse me, wind, wind cover. This wind cover actually works, by the way, excellent. Um, if, I highly recommend getting these on, putting these on every camera you own if you use it outdoors. Under this wind cover is two microphones for stereo recording. The s sound quality of this GX85 is actually excellent, and it's one of the only things I miss since I've moved up and upgraded to Sony equipment, which is what I'm recording this on right now, is the sound quality on the Lumix is actually better. But, meantime, it's two-channel two stereo. This is 5.1-channel surround sound, so it is better. I don't know why anyone really needs that from a camcorder, surround sound, because you're not going to shoot a feature-length movie on this camcorder. It's simply not going to happen. So I don't really know who's going to use that, but that is one of the other few advantages. On that fine note, I'm going to conclude and say, if you need a simple camcorder that has good audio pickup, this is your camcorder. It doesn't get any better than this, other than the competing Sony product, the AX55 or whatever the number was. 
This, on the other hand, is an inexpensive mirrorless camera, of which there are many choices that compete with this, and they're all going to be better than this camcorder in many different ways. Uh, right now, I'm shooting on the Sony camera that you can't see, uh, and it costs still less than this camcorder, even though it's a lot more than this unit. Okay, that's the first thing. Over here, you can't see that camera either, but shooting the second scene right here is another Lumix. It's a G7. You can't buy that new anymore, but used, it's dirt cheap. It's way cheaper than this camcorder. I can't figure out why someone wants this camcorder, but I'm very happy to say I found someone who wants this camcorder, and they're buying it from me tomorrow. That's why I'm making this video today. It served me really, really well, and it's an excellent top quality camcorder, but it doesn't compete with nearly any mirrorless camera that can shoot 4K consecutive video. There's just nothing about it that's better other than ease of use and potentially durability and potentially audio quality. On those fine notes, I am gonna say, thank you for watching, buy a mirrorless camera, unless you're giving it to someone who's technologically incapable and then buy this camcorder. Thank you for watching, share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.